In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about solving word problems. Now, just keep in mind ahead of time, this is not meant to do all the work for you. I'm not going to be able to give you some sort of pattern to follow that'll do everything. Just follow steps A, B, and C and you'll get the answer. A lot of this is still going to fall on your critical thinking abilities. But what it will do is it will give you a framework to solve these problems if you don't already have one. Or maybe your framework is kind of shaky and you would like a bit of a, an update. So it's not going to do all the work for you, but it's going to at least be a start to help you figure things out on your own. Getting that out of the way, let's go through some useful bullet points to solving word problems. Now, of course, when you start a word problem, the first thing you have to do is read it. But what a lot of people do is they try reading it once, and then they get confused. And they sort of freeze and just give up. And what I'm going to tell you is that's not how you solve a word problem. Instead, the best way I've found to do it is read it multiple times at least twice, sometimes more depending on how difficult the problem is for you. So, the first read through though, what you want to do with this is you want to just read it as if it's a story, kind of. Not like, not like something you need to, not a problem you need to work on, just it, it's a story telling you, it's trying to tell you something. So, you just read it through, not too, fa uh, not too fast, not too slow. You just read it at a normal pace, as if you're reading Huckleberry Finn. Then, the second time, right, now that you have an idea of, like, a general idea of what the problem is about, you read it a second time, and you do it very slowly, in order to interpret some of the things that the problem is saying. And again, you can do it three or four or five times, as many times as you need, but you should do it at least twice. So, once you've finished reading, let's move on to step two. So step two is draw a picture if possible. What I mean by if possible is a lot of the times the things we're talking about are concrete objects. Like for example, maybe the word problem is about a barn. Well, you can picture a barn, right? so you can draw a barn. And a lot of the times, especially when it comes to like solving math problems, drawing that barn would actually be very helpful. So if there's some sort of concrete object that's being talked about, then you should probably draw that picture. If it's more abstract, like it's talking about numbers, you're not going to be able to draw that picture, so you don't need to worry about that. On to step three. You write down all the quantities you were able to figure out in, um, in your reading, and you also, if you have a picture, you want to label that picture. So maybe it says something like the length of the barn was 15 meters. Well, then you'd say L equals 15 or something like that. And you would continue on from there. So this is just connected to the reading part where you, you take the words that it said up here and you turn it into numbers down here. As for part four, once you have all the thing, all the quantities you know written down, and you have your picture, if this is an object that it's being talked about, the next thing you want to do is consider the equations related to what you're talking about. So, for example, maybe you're talking about the area of a rectangle. Well, the area of a rectangle is the length times the width. So you, do, you might need this formula. Maybe you're talking about the circumference of a circle. That's equal to 
2 pi times the radius, so you might need that equation. You have the volume, maybe you're talking about the volume of a sphere. Well, that's equal to 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. So maybe you'll need that equation. And there might be other equations specific to a certain field. Um, for example, maybe there's an equation with economics. We're not going to get into things like that, but just keep that in mind. Um, and also sometimes what happens often is that instead of there being a set formula for your, uh, for your word problem, what often happens is the word problem itself gives you a formula in the words. So that's also another possibility. Now the last step, step five, you use the equations and you use the values that you have and you solve the problem. And this is, I just call it the chug and plug sta stage. So it's not, um, this is, tends to be the easiest part of all of this. The biggest problem most people have is like drawing the picture and writing down the quantities. Once you get to the equations and the numbers and you just plug them in, that tends to be a bit easier for people. So this is really, um, this is a strong framework for solving the most problems that you'd see in uh, math classes. So at this point, I think it's time to get into some example problems to give you an idea of how I would do this.